because of all these things happening there. And on the other hand, the kingdom of the evil one because of what it looks like. It was easy to look from the sky looking down. And so I brought it up to my retreat director and I told him about this. My retreat director was not convinced. He said, well, how easy it is for you to meditate on this. And so he asked me to meditate on this same uh, uh, meditation again. This time he said, try to imagine yourself on the ground in the middle of these two kingdoms. Imagine yourself in the middle of the battle. And so I did. And it was truly a different world when I did that compared to my previous meditation. Because this time, being in the middle of the battle, being in the middle of the fight, it was very difficult to determine which one is the standard of God and which one was the standard of the evil one because of a lot of noise, a lot of distraction. And it seems that all the things, the dust that is gathering up in the air, seemed to cloud what's around me. And so I could not see clearly what was the kingdom of God and what was the kingdom of the evil one. And I brought up that difficulty to my retreat director and he said, you see, when you're in the middle of a situation and you have to make choices, sometimes you find that it's not easy to make those choices. It's not easy to choose which one is right and which one is wrong. And so I asked him, then how do I know which one is right? And he brought me back to the teachings of St. Ignatius. He said that you know that it is the voice of God that is speaking to you, that is presenting itself to you when it is a voice that brings peace, when it is a voice that brings joy, when it is a voice that brings you hope and faith and love. In a, in a, in a sense, it is a voice that brings you the gifts of the Holy Spirit. On the other hand, you will know that it is the voice of the enemy when it is the voice that brings doubt and suspicion and distress. And you feel as if you are not able to settle down when you're thinking of it. So it's a good practical thing for me to always remember since then that whenever I'm in the middle of a situation and I have to make a choice, that sometimes it's not easy to know which one is good and which one is not. But to always remember what St. Ignatius said, that the voice of good is always one that brings peace and love and joy and hope. So I think it's a very practical thing for us also to reflect upon today that as we are always put in a situation where we feel that we have to make a choice between good and evil and sometimes we do not know how to make the choice perfectly to just look into the voices that are speaking in us and to see which voice brings us hope and love and joy and peace and that is said that it's in itself is the voice of God. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the sacrifice, Almighty God, cleanse us by its mighty power and lead us to approach its source with ever greater purity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You, therefore, Almighty Father, be blessed through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand we extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that, converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed in us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May you make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may you keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Shelton, our Bishop, and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in the new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, 
that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the fate of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. In Christ, we have redemption by his blood and forgiveness of our sins in accord with the riches of his grace. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as we pass from old to new, so with former ways left behind, we may be renewed in holiness of mind through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Look upon your servants, O Lord, and in your goodness protect with heavenly assistance those who trust in your mercy through Christ our Lord. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass ascended. Thank you all for joining us at our live stream celebration of the Mass today. And uh, just a reminder, we will have a live stream of the Chaplet of Divine Mercy at 3 p.m. Uh, with that is um, a chance for adoration with the exposition of the Blessed Sacrament. We will also have our confessions, drive-in confessions, beginning at 5 p.m. tonight until 7 p.m. So 
we hope to be able to have you all join us in those celebrations. Uh, so once again, thank you for joining us at this Mass this afternoon.